Are you tired of being told that playing E4 is not cool and that you should be getting out of your basement and touch some grass? Well, there's an easy solution to that actually. You gotta unify all of the uh, sub-Saharan bits as uh, Songhai as quickly as you possibly can, preferably before the 1500s, and then everybody you know is going to acknowledge the fact that it was all worth it. And that's exactly why we're gonna unify this whole region with Songhai. Songhai is surprisingly strong it has one of the coolest mission trees that gives both a ton of claims all around this area as well as the Maghreb area and it gives a lot of permanent modifiers and juicy stuff like for example it can spawn feudalism in uh, Songhai very easily we just need to get basically 25 government reform progress. It also has some seriously good national ideas that include discipline, infantry combat ability, morale of armies, global trade power and so on. And hey if you want to see a brand new video on Mali where we become the richest nation by far thanks to the gold mines in this particular area which we will be getting today as well as Songhai then let's get 5,000 likes in the first few days after this video is out I want to see that you guys are interested in videos in this particular area now of course the first thing we'll be doing is we'll be doing war preparations we need to get a hundred percent force limit for that so we're gonna be recruiting the free company in the province of Gawa right next to our main army over here we'll be attacking our nation on the 11th of December of course we got to get a general so let's go ahead and get one now we're also going to be summoning the diet and we'll be going for whatever agenda best suits us here so if we get one province in the western saharan bits then uh we get 50 admin points hell yeah i'm, I'm super down for that boys it's going to be a fairly standard estate only difference is that we have to seize lands because we only start with 27.5 crown lands so we're going to end up with 2.5 crown lands from the beginning but not to fear we will be getting a lot of crown lands from our neighbors after we conquer them of course demi wise we probably I really want to get the reform progress growth from them to be fair and we also want to get the uh, religious unity take note I'm not gonna be giving out too many privileges right now because I want to get as much crown lands as possible in my initial wars and the lower the influence you have for the estates the more crown lands you're gonna get also let's not forget to go for the uh, land acquisition that offers core creation cost minus five percent set our national focus on admin because we will need to core a ton of things and let's get some uh, advisors over also, we also need to get the indebted to the merchants guild loans to uh, be able to field the army we're gonna have for the initial wars when it comes to rivals we will rival nations that are really really small and easy to take out because the big boys we will be annexing but our rivals initially will be using for show of strength wars so we can get extra mana points that will help us out in coring all the provinces within this region fast so that means we can do Fada Nagumadug, Katsina and Zazao these are not really that important and all of them are situated right here between a lot of other nations so after we do our show of strength wars it's possible that their neighbors might attack them and wipe them out and as such we don't need to worry about it take note our starting leader is absolute dog schnapple but he's 65 so he's gonna pass along very very soon same goes for the air he's 74 so because of that we can make both of them actually generals and that should uh, increase the chances of them passing away honestly very cool with that happening <laughs> i'm gonna get a temporary alliance with the Mali so I get less aggressive expansion with them whilst I uh, wipe out everybody else around here there you go we got our first mission done now we have a lot of claims all around us on air Yatenga Timbuktu and on everybody who's not yet subscribed because that's right I plan on attacking everybody that's not yet click the subscribe button don't forget as they say in uh, YouTube land smash the subscribe button smash it boys no but seriously though you don't need to subscribe if you don't want to that's a okay of course but take note i will be silently judging you and i will be um mentioning you next time i do my uh my sacrifices at the temple what what who said that the first target doesn't necessarily matter too much it's more about who you have easier alliance sets to defeat so in my case that would be Timbuktu I'm also kind of attacking Timbuktu because I have the uh, agenda from the estate so I want to get that completed as soon as possible plus by taking Timbuktu I can uh, get the two other region colonized and I also get claims on Jene which has the uh, monument here the great mosque of Jene that I really want to get for myself afterwards and that was a ridiculously quick battle okay fair enough uh, let's go ahead and siege stuff down now 
now. 207 days and we managed to get Timbuktu. Now let's uh, finish sieging out the rest of their country and killing off their army. We want to do this not necessarily because we need to, but because I want to get the extra army tradition from uh, attacking this army and winning that battle, of course. Because we have some missions that require some extra army tradition. 1.8 army tradition better than none, right? End of the day. We do not need to finish those two sieges down though. So 183 and 37. Amazing. Now let's get ready for the next war because boom shaka locos. We just got claims on Jene as well as the northern bits of Mali here. So uh, we got that going for us. We can do conquest of Karumbisale as well. That is going to give us the uh, Siberian frontier on the Tekrur area. And that is uh, right over here. These are Siberian frontiers, however. So that means that rebellions technically should not happen here. So the natives should not rise up in any of these four provinces. There you go. Now we can do another mission here. Improve bureaucracy. The one that I was talking about before, which allows us to get feudalism in two provinces, Gao and Zarmaganda, which is enough for us to embrace feudalism now. So we're not suffering from any of the tech penalties that we started with. Go ahead and core up everything as well. And let's start the war against Jenny. Next. We will also co-belligerate air so we can uh, fully annex air and then get access to the uh, two provinces here that we can colonize and make our way towards Fezan afterwards. And we're also going to co-belligerate Yao simply because they have no alliances. We can also bring in Mali, promise them land, but of course we shall not be delivering any sort of land. <laughs> we're basically just using them for the troops they have to help us out against the other enemies in our particular war. I'm also going to be assigning some objectives to Mali so they can siege down Ayr's lands. I don't know if they're going to do it, but at least I try. Oh, we got a marriage offer from a widow. White peace with Jenne and Jenne becomes our vassal. We also get a royal marriage with Jenne or we just ignore that schnapps and we just uh, we annex them ourselves. So here's the thing right though. If we do this, it's going to cost us 41 aggressive expansion. It's not as bad though, to be fair. If we accept the vassalage of Jenne, then we don't get any aggressive expansion. So we can use that 40 something points of aggressive expansion to just annex the neighbors of Jenny really. So I am going to accept them as a vassal. The sad part is that now I have a five years truce with the uh, air. So I got to attack him again in 1451. Feels bad, man. But it is what it is. I guess we can attack these guys in the meanwhile. Yatenga. And we can also do this, which offers some production, manpower, and tax in the province of Jenny. Actually, I'm going to wait until I integrate Jenny. It doesn't really benefit me having more development in my vassal's lands for now. Because that just means it's going to take longer for me to integrate them later down the line. I am though going to recruit some more infantry. Let's go three units and let's attack these boyos. Not going to call in Mali. Don't care about him too much. And let's uh, Gucci Golski should be able to catch up with their units fairly easily. We can do two things at the same time. So we're going to be carpet sieging them and wiping out their army. And by the way, we went up to 9.9% crownlands from just getting the few provinces in Timbuktu alone. Another one bites the dust. This one in Yatenga. And let's bring our units, merge them up here because we have to chase down what's left of uh, Bonomon's army. Or actually, you know what? I could vassalize Bonomon and with Jenny alongside, I could get the strong duchies privilege from having these two vassals. Yeah, I think that's probably the best choice here. I invite you Bonomons of the Bonomon tribe to the greater Songhai Confederation. Ya better join, boys. Ya better join. And they did because they got no choice. <laughs> All right, we can also do our first government reform here. We do need a ton of manpower, so of course we will be going for the manpower reform. We shall also be fully annexing Yatenga, though. And now that we've done that, we can give the strong duchies, as I mentioned before. I probably should have waited a little bit uh, with the reform as well, since that also gave 10% influence. Wasn't the smartest moment to give out that uh, reform, was it? Also going to be attacking... Uh, uh, these boys next to uh, my brand new vassal. We got the name. It's uh, Kong, right? From King Kong, right? Of course it is. We should be able to catch him up over in their uh, capital of Kong. And we should also be able to... I'm not going to say stack wipe because we did get some bad rolls there. But if we did get good rolls at the beginning of that battle, we would have been able to stack wipe. Since we need more units, we're going to be recruiting the Dahomey Amazons. Funny history about the uh, Dahomey Amazons. They were originally established in the uh, kingdom of Dahomey over here or as we call it today I guess Benin. Benin being what emerged out of the kingdom of Dahomey I guess you could say. Pretty much the same primary fawn culture as you see in the game people in Benin that you had back in uh, the Dahomey kingdom. The Dahomey Amazons were an all-female regiment within the Dahomey kingdom and during the 19th century King Gezo which was one of the uh, most important leaders of the Dahomey kingdom used the Dahomey Amazons in a lot of his battles. There's actually a movie that came out, I 
think the Woman King was something like that, where the Dahomey Amazons are shown as the liberators fighting against the uh, British oppressors trying to enslave Africans. Kind of funny because um, they also mentioned that it's uh, uh, inspired by True Facts movie at the beginning of the movie. But if you do a very, very easy Google search, you don't need to even read books about this. It's just very widely known by pretty much everybody in the historic community that the Dahomey Kingdom and the Dahomey Amazons were the biggest slave kingdom in the 19th century. Basically, the Dahomeys would go around and slave everybody, burn entire villages, take the kids and sell them off as slaves. And the Dahomey Amazons were the ones doing it. The British Empire actually attacked the Dahomey Kingdom to stop them from trading and from enslaving people. And this movie shows us the literal opposite of what actually happened historically. It's mind-blowing that they quite literally wrote history the opposite of how it happened. <sighs> I wish there were tickets to go to Mars sometimes, I swear. I have to pass over through these lands to get to Jolof. Right now, the uh, Fulani lands here are basically like a minefield. The AI is trying to avoid stepping on these because they know that if they do step on these, the natives are going to rebel and they're going to push them out and they're going to destroy their army so they don't want to lose uh, troops. Oh, we got our first rebellion in Timbuktu, but that's fine. We have the defensiveness edict already in the province of uh, Timbuktu. Well, in our capital state, right? The uh, Niger Bend, which is surprisingly pretty big, actually. Sadly, even though we managed to get Wolof, we uh, we have to uh, destroy Wolof's army before we can actually annex them. So uh, let's try and make our way and try and avoid all of the rebellions that Mali have, or probably we'll have to go towards Galam, Wagadu, and so on. Oh, I'm gonna have to fight natives again, aren't I? Oh, actually, they're close to finishing this province. And they finished the province. Yay, don't need to do that anymore. Awesome. 15 prestige legitimacy. Hell yeah, let's do that. Okay, now let's go Galam, Wagadu, kill off the separatists, and then make our way down here so we can kill off the uh, Jolofian armies too. Boom, Shakalokos. So one of them is out of the way. Just Jolof left. I'm gonna wait till my trips are fully recovered though because um, most of these are basically ragtag at this point. I need to get a proper standing army, guys. I think after this, I'm gonna do one of my show of strength wars and then I'm just gonna chill for a little bit before I continue the expansion into the eastern parts or into the south for that matter. Actually, if I just wait for two more months, I don't need to fight Jolof's army. I can just piece him out. So I don't need to lose any more manpower. Let's just wait for two months then. And there you go. Literally, as I said, 145, 144. That means we got rid of uh, pretty much any threat into the western parts of our kingdom. Let's wipe out the rebellious scumbags here now. Mali broke with us. Oh no, whatever am I gonna do now, guys? I love the fact that I basically am not getting any sort of aggressive expansion right now. That's because most of these nations are completely different cultures and completely different religions. The northern bits being Sunni, the southern bits being fetishist. And if you go at the culture map mode, look at that. We got like four different culture groups piled up together here so you can very very easily dodge any sort of a coalition because of that we also just got military tech 3 so we are above everybody else here militarily speaking it should be a lot easier now to wipe out everybody unfortunately i got no more possible rivals so i feel like i made a mistake i should have started with the show of strength war because i grew really really fast really quick i mean we tripled in the matter of six years right so i did miss out on like 300 mana points because of it keep note if you're gonna do this run do the show of strength war first before you start doing the expansion wars. The homie Amazons are pretty much out of manpower, so I'm going to delete them as I will the uh, free company. However, before I delete the free company, I'm going to recruit again the free company right over here. We can also recruit the grand and the independent company now, and I will, of course, make use of both of those troopers. That is because we went above 150 development. That's why we have the grand independent and the free company available again. That's why we can have two free companies at the same time here. But considering this one's pretty much depleted and with no manpower reserves, I'm going to get rid of it, of course. Also going to get a quick injection of money and seizing some crown loans right after. But we can use this money to pay off the older loans, especially the 1% loan. So we can take new 1% loans afterwards and use the new 1% loans to pay off all the other loans, of course. So check it out. We can essentially end up with only the 1% loans now. Five loans of 1%. We're paying 0.35 in interest and we still have 272 in the uh, treasury. Plus, after we start lowering the autonomy, we're going to get a lot more money and a lot more manpower out of our provinces. The downside, of course, is that we're going to have to fight some uh, rebels. But I mean, what is EU4 if not a rebel simulator, right? Also, big shout out to the freaking horrible ruler that we have. This guy started at 65. He's 72 and still didn't die. And he's 
he's a 202. Like, all of my mana point problems are because of this dude. How are you still alive, man? Come on, RNG, just kill him off already. He's even up in my armies, dude, and he's still not dying. What the F, bro? Well, it's been five years. That means the truce is over with these guys, so we can attack him again. Couple of Drake Yawo. Not gonna couple of Drake Kano, because they do have some other alliance sets I don't want to have to fight against. We'll try to make this as quick as possible, of course. If I manage to rush for their capital before they actually get one month's tick, it's gonna be stuck at a thousand garrison, but chances are that's not gonna happen. I'll probably have to struggle a little bit in order to siege down air. Hey, finally our dude just died. We got a, what? A 326. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm happy with that. That's way better than 202, okay? That's This is just an amazing leader right now, in my opinion. And we also are about to wipe out all of air's units, so that is double whammy right there. Of course, let's not forget to adopt the title of Mia Khalifa and enforce religious unity. I feel like I should have stuck to my initial uh, plans of just uh, going for Kono so I can piece him out, but now I have to fight them, sadly. That means I'm gonna lose more manpower again. There you go. That's one stack in Vapenicum for these boyos. Second one incoming for Yao. Come on, let's reach these troopers. And we got an air. That's pretty cool. 242 is average, let's say. Oh, we might be fighting them in our capital. Okay, we got the defender advantage in that case. What is this? Oh, no, this is just a steps. Doesn't matter then. More rebels. Yay. Literally what I was asking Santa for Christmas, guys. <laughs> All right, let's make our leader a... Uh, actually, I'm not gonna make him a general. I'm just gonna get another general. Oh, hell yeah. Did you see that Chad Lord we just got? Pays off being continuously at war. We already have 40 army tradition, lads. And it's Arrivederci time, uh, Yao or whoever this is. Kono seems to be rebuilding another army here, but I'm not gonna let them uh, finish rebuilding that army, sadly for them. I need to start sieging down their provinces, and let's go like this, send some of these boys over here. White piece is enough, maybe a little bit of money as well, if we can get some from Kono is good too. 4152, so that means after we siege one or two of these provinces, we should be able to piece them out. Let's 35 ducats, absolutely glorious. Aw, Cannon Bornum is sieging them down now. No, that means I can only take one province from them. Oh, well, I mean, better than nothing, right? On the bright side, though, everybody is attacking Kano now, so they're gonna also be gone very, very shortly. Let's destroy these rebels here, because um, they already have, like, 50% progress, so we need to take care of that. That is really no bueno, boys. There you go. That's one less army we need to worry about. Let's send some units over here to unsiege that, and... Oh, what? They unsieged that, and then these guys sieged it afterwards? Wow. At least we can get a white piece with them. And for that matter, we can also fully annex air whilst we're at it there you go we can do one more of our missions now stop the air raids where we get poireg as an accepted culture get one stability and we get a decision that allows us to colonize tajarhi and jaro so one stability for free this sounds pretty cool i'm not gonna go for two stab and then go to three because i need the admin points to be fair but hey two stability is good with me and now we can also get colonization of the corridor and the colonization of tuat we just need to have five base manpower in any of our provinces that are state so we can just develop any of the cheaper provinces let's see who that would be that would be tech roar go tech roar dev up five times and we can do our decision now let's say colonization of tuat let's go with tuat first and then after tuat we can do the other one here and let's div this up again twice to five so we can do the other decision now and colonize the corridor there you go two provinces here being colonized another one here again these are siberian frontiers so we don't actually need to worry about the rebels or better yet natives uh, popping out of there we're also going to be sallying out with our uh, defending forces to uh, kill off these rebels not because i necessarily need them to win but because having those 2,000 extra soldiers means it's going to be easier for me to wipe out the rebels and I'm not going to lose more units of my regular troops. Now let's go by the border with Mali because we will be attacking Mali. I need to wait however until they uh, actually get uh, all of these rebels to enforce their demands because I don't want to have to fight the rebels that Mali have. Now take note with the most recent patch sadly with the previous patch as well Mali is pretty bugged in the sense that uh, they get way too many rebels. The AI cannot handle the events that Mali gets and and that's why if you click on their provinces, pretty much every single one of their provinces have a hundred autonomy, which means you're basically getting close to nothing from these provinces, which is why I'm not really too worried about getting these provinces right now, since it's kind of going to be just useless land for a while until the autonomy goes down. But I mean, we got to get it at some point, right? So we might as well get it now since they're only allied to Fagaga Dogog over here and we're going to be attacking both of them. I want to fully annex Fagaga Dogog so I get access to 
to Oyo, and I will be taking parts of Mali, maybe the gold mines, which kind of makes up for the fact that they're not giving anything, and for the fact that eventually they will give something after I lower the autonomy. I'm coming for you, Mali. I'm coming for you. I want to get the Wagadougal lands. So after this war, I think I'm going to delete the uh, free company once more. I'm going to get rid of them because they got no manpower pool left. I'll keep them until I finish these sieges, however, of course. And afterwards, I'll get the uh, Grand Company. Actually, you know what? I'll get the Grand Company right now, bro, because I can do it. I can afford it. Actually, I can even afford the Independent Company. You know it's bad when you have so many rebels in your country that the rebels are fighting each other over who's going to take that province. I mean, it's just, it, it's really bad in Mali right now. <laughs> Mali is quite literally unplayable unless it's a player playing it. Little old Shmagagadaboob here will be missed, that's for sure, by um, by their peers, not by me, of course. Very close to the juicy lands of uh, Dahomey and uh, also Benin. Benin is where it's at, boys. Benin is definitely where it's at. Look at that juicy ivory province with 12 development. Ooh. Woo. And Mali accepted some of the rebel demands, not all of them, because we still have pretender rebels apparently, so um, I'm not sure if I should even go into their lands, I don't want the pretender rebels to be attacking me and stuff. Wait, what? Got 100% on Mali? Excuse me, what? Did they just unconditionally surrender to me? Oh my god, they did unconditionally surrender to me. Oh my god, I this is the first time ever when I actually take a full country's, I, I fully annex this country without having fought a single battle. Do I want to annex them now? <laughs> Or do I want to wait until they accept the pretender rebels? Because it's just, it's not Gucci, man. When do they even unconditionally surrender to me? This is definitely a juicy save, guys. I highly recommend you check it out. I'll make it available, of course, to all my patrons and channel members. Okay, I'm tired of waiting. I'm just going to fully annex them. Screw this, bro. How many rebels can they have here? I mean, oh, come on. Really? They had 2,000 rebels. That's it, bro. Okay, now let's uh, go ahead and actually, can I just concentrate first? I think I want to concentrate first. Yes, sir. So we can chill for a while now. Let's actually start integrating Jenny for that matter because it's been 10 years so we can do that integration we'll integrate these guys as well and then uh we'll start the, with the rest of the conquests afterwards we can also kill off some of these rebels that we have around the lands wait what dagborn joined in the coalition against me i actually have nations in the coalition against me. well that means plans have changed i'm not gonna be chilling i am gonna be killing instead and let's start with the people in the actual coalition themselves namely oyo dahomey dagborn and wagadougadu teach him a lesson for even starting a coalition against us so after we take these guys in the central bits we really just have the eastern parts none of which are actually joining in a coalition except as i guess so we actually can chill after this <laughs> we're also going to be setting our trade policies to propagate religion this acts as a center of reformation essentially where provinces that are not sunni will start getting converted to sunni by uh that particular policy you can see here bambuk is getting converted by a nearby religious center to what has been colonized which means we have access to the moroccan bits now i think we can also do the mission contact with the maghreb now yes we can we got permanent claims on pretty much the entirety of morocco so whenever we're ready to expand in the north we can just uh right click yes and attack yes these bad boys they're allied to tunis and granada so the usual suspects of the moroccan allies until that bit though we are in the process of pretty much destroying all of the um fetishist nations remaining in our particular area plus we're about to finish coring up all of the uh, mali lands so that means we can uh, fully annex everything from this particular coalition slash band of broskies that tried to defend against the mighty Songhai but got their asses handed to them because they're little schnapple dupes that's why they cannot stand up against us hey yo what fell at 14 both of them fell at 14%? No freaking way, dude. No freaking way. I am actually loving this RNG with Songhai. All right, so we are basically gonna get a few nations in the coalition, but I don't give a schnapps anymore. Even though they want to join or not, it's irrelevant because I'm too strong at this point for anyone else in this region to do anything against me. And a member of coalition cannot sign a separate peace. Okay, never mind. I guess we got a peace out from these guys then. There you go. That is a full annexationos. And we actually don't even have any coalition. We only have Zazao and the other two that were before in a potential coalition. That is obviously because uh, they were of the same culture here and these guys were of the same religion. They are indeed fetishists, so that makes a lot of sense now that I think about it. Let's go ahead and concentratio, of course. Oh, cannot even concentrate there. Damn, how low is your development, brother? And let's get apparently a rival. Oh, we can get Morocco as a rival. Hell yeah, boys. Finally, after all this time, we actually got a rival. We can scornfully insult them, get a little bit of that juicy 
CCPP. And as I was saying before, delete the free company. We might get another free company though. We also need to get some claims now. We still have a few claims, but we don't have all the claims that we want. Let's see these guys here. So these guys are allied to Canon Bornu and no. So that is here and there. So if we do that and this, that is essentially every country here with the exception of Yao. So I would have to attack Yao. Yeah, okay. So whenever I'm ready, I can attack these guys. And that is the last war aside from Benin, of course, and, and Fulo. So I guess that's not the last war. Liar! Oh, Ludi, you said it's the last war, but it's not the last war, Ludi. Why you say, bro? We can get, though, 20 army tradition and this juicy event that unlocks the religious missions here. We can be tolerant of his wall, but no, I'm going to be religious. So we're going to get convert. Mosi gets uh, 100 autonomy loss in every Mosi province. More power to Ulema gives us tech cost, a minus 10% intolerance of the true faith. Invite scholars allows us to invite scholars without diplomatic requirements and convert West Africa. Until the end of the game, we get tolerance of the true faith opinion of same religion and so on so yeah these four missions are definitely better than the other ones i mean the other ones are not bad either to be fair i'm not gonna diss on the other ones the tolerant missions are decent mm, i think i'm going to also make mali an accepted culture since i have so many mali provinces mosi provinces as well i have quite a few of them so i might make mosi an accepted one later down the line it's so sad that most of these are at 99 autonomy me lowering this by 25 autonomy doesn't even scratch the surface though <laughs> I will have to set up centralization effort edicts in all of those provinces if I'm ever going to be able to get anything out of them this campaign. Before any wars can happen, of course, we have to have another thousand freaking rebels pop out. So I got to take care of these guys first. Just casual Songhai gaming. Well, really just any country you might play in this particular region. Close to finishing integrating Jenny. Let's see if it's a little bit faster if I concentrate this as well. Oh, wow. We went it from 75% to 90% from concentrating those lands. Oh, yeah. That was was a little bit faster for sure let's bring back this diplomat so we can start annexing uh, bonomo as well actually we got to re improve relations with them first my sultan jenny has been genied what 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 the snaps is a genie nobody will ever know but hey now that we did that let's go ahead and uh, lower the autonomy of those provinces and we can do our mission here the conquest of jenny so we can change the religion of jenny to sunni and we also got a lot of those uh juicy development points right there Plus, we can do take the empire, we become an empire rank, and the event emergence of Songhai happens to Mali, which doesn't exist anymore, so it doesn't happen. <laughs> now, if we take this Fulo province, we also get permanent claims on Jolof and the Niger region. Let's uh, let's attack this uh, alliance block here that I was talking about earlier and make a mincemeat out of Zim. <laughs> these guys are taking care of my rebels, and these guys are about to take care of my rebels. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, people I'm fighting right now. You're the best, really. Honestly, one of the quickest uh, wars I've had even quicker than some of the early wars man which uh, you know i wasn't as strong as i am now that's primarily because uh, they haven't been really focusing their armies properly and because they have rebels i'm guessing but hey who am i to judge boys i am nobody to be doing as a judging right here you know what i'm saying oh that's where their armies were they were basically sieging down my vassal's capital that's just next level big brain ai really i personally haven't deciphered what the ai is trying to think about here but clearly they know what's up we might be outnumbered well we're not outnumbered anymore anymore because Cannon Borna decided to run away but uh yeah we have super strong units they still have military tech too so this is basically slaughtering natives really well would you look at that boys it's the classic you can fully annex us but you cannot fully annex us and take our money why can I fully annex you but I cannot okay now they now they're okay with what the f man is this game okay bro what is going on here man how am I able to annex you but not take your money uh, what is your religion you guys are you're Sunni you're not you're not another religion here are you secretly lower to corruption you say um yeah sure let's uh let's uh, debase currency first and then we can lower our corruption si senor there you go we went it up with 500 dukatenstein and let's wipe out this army over here oh my god i love this so much man look at all the amount of production manpower base tax we're getting alongside the juicy modifiers here i absolutely love the way they revamped this uh particular event so this is gonna go what to province of bago oh come on man this has 70 autonomy bro seriously like actually seriously right now the last of the free people here is about to not be so free anymore we're going full on the homie here on these peeps all right i forgot about yawa also got to take them out in order to fully annex wadai which is why i haven't pieced out katsina yet because i got to do this war first in order to piece out katsina after hey yawa if you follow 28 percent, oh i'm not giving you schnapps i was gonna say i'm gonna give you candy if you follow 28 percent, but you're not getting nothing because you already fell the deal is off yawa 
Owl, I tricked you, that's right. You ain't gonna be seeing nothing right here, sir. You ain't gonna be seeing nothing at all. Oh, 106 overextension. Yeah, that's not good. Let's uh, let's do this. That should lower our overextension a little bit. How much did that lower to? 100 exactly, bro. Come on. You cannot make this shit up, I swear. <laughs> okay, um... I guess I just have to wait until we core one of those and through it, man. I'll take this, I guess. I had to delete my mercenary company because it literally had no more units in it left. So I'm going to be getting my independent company next because I will be using the independent company for a very long time. After I finish this war, I have no more wars for a while. And because of that, I will be recovering my admin and diplotech. And I will also be just centralizing my country, converting all of these provinces to their true faith, of course. And most importantly, I will be using the independent company to uh, wipe out any sort of rebellious group I might have. So these guys, despite having 75,000 manpower pool within the next 10, 15 years, which is likely the amount of the years I need to finish killing off all the rebels, it's going to go down to zero manpower pool. <laughs> okay, so let's automatically manage suppressing the rebels here with this one Chad Lord of an army, assign the entire region to them. Truly a very satisfying click to get rid of the last remaining free people of Middle Earth. I mean, uh, Middle Africa, really? Hallelujah, hallelujah. We conquered everything we can see. Hey. No, but seriously, though, 1472 is okay. We can do it faster if we want to. But now is when we get the big challenge because we have to catch up with tech. And then we have a lot of options. We can start expanding into the Maghreb next, or we can expand into Central Africa by going into Congo. We actually uh, can do that fairly easy as well. We just got to colonize one of these provinces here. It was a fun run, though. I actually really enjoyed it. A little bit of a different change of pace from the playing toll vids I've been doing recently to be honest so if you enjoy this run you're gonna love my Russia run up next and I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons channel members and twitch subscribers I would not be able to do this without all your support if anybody else would like to also support me you will find the links in the description